Traveling alone or solo was not something I thought I would ever do in my life, but growing up and getting this undeniable urge to explore the world, I ran into the reality of life where traveling wasn't a financial or personal priority for my friends and family. Everybody was busy building a career and family life, but I just wanted to see as much of the world as possible. Despite that urge, traveling solo seemed like the most scary thing ever. What if something happened to me or my belongings? How would I solve that just by myself? What if I got lost or lonely or even kidnapped? There comes a time in each of our lives when you decide that you're either going to face your own fears or live with regrets for the rest of your life not knowing what you're capable of. I decided to go for it and travel the world alone. Just like with every fear, once faced, it turns out it's not as scary as you thought it would be. Traveling solo was actually the best decision of my life and changed me forever. If you're considering taking that solo travel plunge, in this video I'll share some lessons I learned along the way. This way I hope to ease some of your fears and prepare you for what might be the biggest adventure of your life. Hope this helps you to take that final step and travel solo yourself. To see more of my videos in the future, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. You can also find more of my videos on Fortnite Travel in India, linked below. There are three main reasons why solo travel is so amazing. First of all, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, how you want it. It's just you and whatever you wanna do. It enables you, number two, to meet people more easily. People are less intimidated by you and more intrigued to talk to you if you are just traveling by yourself. Of course, number three, if you are in the same age group as I am, 30 plus, <laughs> or also just after college, a lot of people won't have money, time to travel with you. Also, they are starting out their own families probably. So most of my friends have children and they just simply don't have the time to travel with me. So why should you waste time waiting for other people to make your big trip when you can just go alone and meet other people on the road. I think solo travel is an incredible way to gain more confidence because being on your own on the road, you're just forced to take on some situations which you might have never thought that you would be able to handle by yourself if you wouldn't have been out and traveling by yourself. Of course, I understand it can be super scary. One of my friends just recently went on her first solo trip and I could just hear her terror racing in the back of her head. But once you, you know, get over that threshold and you're there and you're taking your first flight or your first car drive or your first train ride by yourself, you're already halfway there. But in order to help you a lot more, I have some tips and tricks to make your life as a solo traveler a little bit easier. This video is actually inspired by my friend because I was like, oh, I wish I could have just sent her a video with all of the information instead of telling her everything on the phone and maybe she will forget half of it. So here we go. If you're hesitant to travel alone, it's really good to know that there's not just one option of solo travel. You can even go and solo travel in your own city. You can book a hotel, you can go to a part of town where you have never been. In case you wanna be a little bit more adventurous, you can just go to another city in your own country because then, you know, the language and the culture are not too unfamiliar, you can do that. You can go to a different city in your own country. Now, if you wanna be super adventurous, obviously you're gonna to go to another country, but then there's still a lot of variations. You can go to a neighboring country. So for instance, if you're in India, you can just go to Sri Lanka or Thailand. Or of course, if you're being super adventurous, you can leave everything behind and go to the other side of the world. Just remember that because you're solo traveling, there's not one format. It's all up to you. You can do it exactly the way you want to do it. The second point that I think is quite important because you're going to be all by yourself out there, which is super fun, like I mentioned, but at the same time, if anything bad happens, there's not going to be anyone there to take care of you. So you cannot fall apart in that moment. You can for a little bit, but then you have to take care of other things. So in order to make that moment a little bit easier, just count on it. And when it happens, you won't be surprised. You'll just have your backup plan. Every single solo traveler gets into trouble at one point or another. I thought I could go upstairs and have dinner in the hotel restaurant. I got nauseous and dizzy just walking out the door. So I had to sit on the stairs because I'm so dizzy. I don't know what to do, guys. I'm sick. Obviously, I can't leave. 
I can't even walk out the door without getting dizzy and nauseous. The horror of being sick by yourself in a hotel room. That's the worst part, everybody. Every solo traveler will tell you that that is the worst thing that you can imagine, being sick by yourself in a hotel room. It is something that is just bound to happen and the best thing that you can do for it is just prepare. So whenever something happens, your crisis plan kicks into action and you're ready to go. So for your crisis plan, a very important thing is to carry extra cash somewhere in your luggage. This cash does not exist until a crisis appears. The best currency to carry with you is dollars. I always have 50 to 100 dollars stashed somewhere in my luggage in case of an emergency. This proved to be very very useful when the Indian demonetization happened and suddenly all of my money was worth nothing. Oh, crap. Houston, we have a problem. You see all this money? Today it was announced that these will not be valid anymore as of tomorrow. Brilliant, brilliant. Banks are closed. No, tomorrow the banks are closed. The ATMs are closed for two days, I think. I'm traveling to Delhi tomorrow. I have to pay for my hotel, so I hope they will be accepting my money. Flipping 500 rupee notes because I can't take any money out out of the ATM. Uh, usually I have trouble with um, places accepting my international credit card here in India and I don't know how I'm gonna eat more. I have I have a hundred rupee note but I need money to pay Ola to get to the train station and but luckily I just had my dollars and apparently dollars are worth more than euros or like accepted more than euros because these girls were trying to exchange euros and they were not successful but me with my dollars I managed to get quite some Indian change which was rare during that time people were like holding on to their change so I would say always have some dollars stashed away in your luggage so whenever anything happens with ATMs or currency in a country your dollars are somewhere in here your crisis dollars <laughs> then something also very important have two bank cards from two different accounts and preferably at two different banks when i was on my first solo trip in Barcelona. My bank card got blocked the second day. I had a second bank card, but it was with the same bank. So that account got blocked too. I had zero money. It took me two days to figure out how Western Union worked. So I would also recommend that to you to figure that out beforehand because Western Union is a lifesaver. But from that moment on, I was always carrying two bank cards. Again, an emergency bank card from a different bank than my regular bank, somewhere stashed in my luggage. If anything goes wrong with my first bank card from my first bank account. Goedendag, je spreekt met Ivana Perkovic. Um, ik zit op dit moment in Thailand en ik heb het idee dat ik mijn pinpas kwijt ben. Maar ik ben I always have a backup card at a different bank. Mm -hmm. Daar gaat hij dan. Het staat er zelfs in het Nederlands. Ik hoop echt dat het een goed teken is. Maybe this is also very needless to say, but I do feel I have to mention it. All your emergency numbers should already be in your phone. So your bank number, obviously, police numbers, uh, hospitals, emergency numbers from your insurance, everything should already be in your phone. In case of an emergency, the last thing you want to do is go through your luggage or through your email and then find the emergency numbers. Do that beforehand because then you just have to like look it up and call and it's very easy. The last emergency situation that you need to prepare for is your important documents getting stolen. My friend Claudia, who has a blog called Backpack Gek, she taught me this trick that you can actually take pictures of all your important documents and just email them to yourself. So at any given time, I will always have a picture of my passport, picture of my visa, a picture of all my bank cards, my credit card, everything will be in my email sometimes I even carry copies with me then in case your passport gets stolen you already have the copies and you can just give them to the police or sometimes even travel with them or request new documents based on the copies that you have at your embassy 
Now that we got your emergency plan sorted, the most asked question is how do I meet new people? I am an introvert. I am socially awkward. Well, the easiest way, in my opinion, to meet other people is to travel solo because it makes you so approachable for other people. But at the same time, also staying in a hostel, easiest way to meet people ever. You will just sit in the common room. Somebody will approach you. It is very, very easy to approach other people. Trust me, I am an introvert. I am quite socially awkward but it was never a problem for me to meet people while on the road by myself. As an introvert, sometimes you also want a little bit more distance from other people, but still some social interaction during the day. And then a homestay is a really, really good option. In a homestay, you usually stay with a family. So when you leave, you might see them, but at the end of the day, when you come home, there's always somebody to say hi to, and they'll usually ask you like, how was your day? Maybe they have some recommendations. In Ladakh, I was staying at Gutur Guest House. I met Daisy another Dutch girl. Even though we were staying in our own rooms, we were not together every single day. We did still have dinner together at the end of the day. Skalzang, the owner of the homestay, was basically our Ladakh mommy. She always took care of us and helped us to get around. So if you want a little bit more of your own space, a homestay is a great option. If you want a lot more space, a hotel is a good option. In a hotel, you won't meet that many people, but at the same time, maybe that's exactly what you want. Maybe you just want time for yourself. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about safety because these are the answers that you're going to have to give to your parents or your guardian. <laughs> this is for you, but this is also so you can answer them and why it's a good idea for you to travel solo. If you are booking an accommodation, please, please, please always check the reviews for reviews of solo travelers. A place might be really good for couples, for families, for groups of friends, but not for solo travelers, especially if you are a girl. In many countries, a lot of guys will think that you are looking for something just because you're traveling solo then it's really good to find a place where they're already used to solo travelers and you won't get like that many weird questions you will just know that you are safe over there i usually book my stays on booking.com on wego and i double check the reviews on tripadvisor do double check the reviews over there because sometimes it can be different we're getting back to that phone sometimes your battery will be at 53 percent when you are leaving your room that is a bad idea when you're traveling solo if you're traveling in a group or you're if you're with friends or with family there will always be a backup phone around you if you are alone that backup option is not not there so make sure your phone is fully charged because you don't know where you're gonna end up maybe you just feel like you know going for a three-hour walk at the end of the day if your phone is fully charged you will always be able to call somebody in case anything happens or in case you get lost let's be real use your Google Maps that's why your uh, phone also needs to be charged and then of course also have an external charger with you I am very very guilty of very often not bringing that with me but by now I have been stuck without my phone so many times that I make sure my phone is fully charged before I leave my accommodation. This way also during the day, if your uh, family or if your guardians or if your friends want any updates of you, or in case you might feel a little bit lonely, you can always reach somebody on your phone and they can also reach you. A very, very important safety tip, which is definitely not obvious. People are kind of scared to be rude. So for instance, Canada or UK, I'm looking at you. It's usually harder for people from those countries to be rude when people are asking personal questions so questions like oh are you traveling alone where are you staying how long are you staying in the city where are you going right now those are questions that for me are very personal in case i've just met a person how long are you staying here in which hotel are you staying where are you going now I rarely answer those questions because I don't want anybody to follow me around. I don't want anybody to know where all my stuff is. Keeping a little bit of privacy while you're traveling alone is very, very good for your safety. Random strangers really don't need to know your whereabouts. That is only a safety risk for yourself. People in the streets, usually guys, let's be real, who feel entitled for you to speak to them. Now, I, there was also a guy who was just like, hi, how are you doing? And I was just like, dude, seriously, 
I don't feel well. I am just out in the streets to buy water and fruit. I literally don't want to talk to a man, woman or child. No one. Unless it's like family or a really close friend or whatever. Sometimes they back off or sometimes they think you don't hear them and they're like, hey, hey, hey. And they keep coming and that's what this guy was doing. And I was just like, no, no, no. He's like, oh, I, I just want to talk. I'm not selling anything. I'm like, I don't care. Do your thing. Do your own business. I'm not in the mood for for speaking and he was like no i'm not an animal i'm not gonna hurt you or whatever and i'm like i don't freaking care i am not in the mood to talk and if they're being really annoying then i'm sorry but you're asking for me to be rude so this tip i thought was really really brilliant i learned this from rachel jones who unfortunately just recently passed away she has an amazing blog hippieinheels.com i need to dedicate a special video to her because she is literally the reason why i felt safe coming to india solo and she said that if somebody is really trying to mess with you it can be an elderly person it can even be a child i have a video on how not to get scammed and the worst scam i ever experienced was with a child i'll link that video down in the description below if they're really harassing you and they won't leave you alone the best solution the absolute best solution and yes i have tried this myself is to just act crazy to be like Ugh! nobody absolutely nobody wants to deal with a crazy person that is the best way to scare off anybody <laughs> just remember that in case something really really bad happens just act crazy and usually they will leave on their own because they'll be like mm, that's psycho i don't know what she's gonna do The last thing that I get so many questions about, apart from the question like, why do you travel solo? But I think I answered that in the beginning is, don't you ever get lonely traveling alone? The reason why many people ask that is because they're scared to get lonely when they're traveling alone. And suddenly you find yourself in a hotel room and there's nobody there and you just wanna go home. My best answer to that is you will get lonely. Just like with the emergency, every single solo traveler gets lonely at one point. But that's okay, because we have some options, my friends. The first one would be to just go to sleep. Sleep it off, the next day you'll probably feel a lot better. The second option is pamper yourself. Do something that really, really makes you happy or distracts you from that feeling of loneliness. For me, that is always 100% a foreign supermarket. I absolutely love browsing any kind of supermarket and no matter how bad I feel before I enter the supermarket, I think like five or 10 minutes in, I will just absolutely forget what I was upset about <laughs> and be happy and be like, oh, this this is cool i love this snack i need to try this drink whatever maybe you have something else that will always make you feel good maybe you want to go for a tour in case you're really feeling lonely a tour is always a great idea as well to just meet new people and be amongst people while you're doing something really really fun overall my loneliness never lasts more than a couple of hours but in case it does last for a longer period of time i have signed this contract with myself a long time ago mentally i gave myself permission to at any time in any place just book a ticket home if i feel like doing that and you need to keep that money on the side so money is not an issue but if you really feel bad and if you really feel that solo travel is not for you then just be proud of yourself that you tried and go home it's okay seriously of course there have been times not many i have to say maybe two or three times when i've asked myself do you want to go home right now and i started checking tickets for amsterdam and while checking the tickets i was just thinking about what i could do the next day and i never went through with it just by giving yourself that permission you are already being your own best friend which is everything you need when you go on a solo travel trip. I really hope this video was helpful and gave some of you the confidence to finally take that step and go on a solo trip. I promise you it will definitely be worth it. Even if you find out that you don't like solo travel, good, then you tried and you can be so proud of yourself. But maybe, just maybe, like me, you will find out that solo travel is absolutely amazing and maybe you wanna do more of it. In case this video was helpful, make sure to put a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Click the little bell icon to get the notifications whenever I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.